What is up, MMA fans? This is Tudoleote for SureDot.com. And today I have the pleasure to talk with USC veteran, Mr. Vince Pichel. Hello, Vince. How are you today? What's up, man? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fine as well. Thank you very much for asking. Um, are you at home right now? Uh, where are you? I just got home. Yeah, I just got home. How was your uh, morning session? It was good. Uh, my morning session runs from about 10 o'clock until 2.30 or 3, so. Oh, that's uh, cool. <laughs> well, what have you been doing this morning? Uh, just training. Did some uh, striking stuff, some footwork stuff. And then uh, afterwards, I head to uh, next door to Barwis, and I take care of some physical therapy things and do some, like, active recovery stuff uh, afterwards to keep my body uh, from being injured <laughs> and hurt. Yeah, of course, of course. Oh, I just noticing in the background your cat is, is jumping. <laughs> it's, no, no, it, oh, it's... Yeah. <laughs> I got That's... shells in the wall for them to climb on. <laughs> That's that's good. It was great to to see that. Um, and what about your weight cutting? Uh, is that on point? Ah, easy money, man. I never have a I never have a bad weight cut. I'm always pretty good about that. I'm pretty strict on my diet. I'm strict on myself, so I usually don't have too many issues there. Uh, so your secret is that you are very strict on your diet. For you know, you never miss any weight. Um. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, uh, a lot of other fighters aren't really that strict on themselves. They kind of fold and crack a little bit in some areas. Um, definitely food and uh, that kind of thing is because, I mean, let's be honest, when we don't eat it, when we don't eat right or eat enough, it, it really wears us down. So uh, I make sure I do a really good job of eating the right things, um, constantly eating and keeping my body uh, fueled so I could uh, train the way I do and fight the way I do. You are scheduled to take on Mark Madsen at UFC 273. Um, I mean, we all know your opponent. I believe you have done already your homeworks. How are you planning to stop his takedowns? Uh, by not letting him touch me. <laughs> he's kind of a he's kind of a drone, a little bit of a robot when he comes in and tries to uh, grab a hold of people. So, I mean, I don't really foresee that working on me too much. And uh, honestly, I'm not really afraid of his wrestling or his grappling at all. So. I don't know. I'm not really, I'm not too worried about it, honestly. <laughs> How do you see it going down? How do you see this fight going down? I honestly see myself knocking him out, hurting him really bad. Um, either knocking him out or dropping him and then just, just strangling him. Um, either way, you know, uh, I'm not really, man, I've had, a, I've had a tough, uh, tough little run here where I haven't really been finishing guys, but I've had a lot of tough opponents, but I feel like I'm going to, I'm, I feel very confident I'm going to be able to finish him and knock him out. Yeah, but even um, if it comes, you know, to go to the judges' scorecards, uh, you told me that you are not, you know, fearing his wrestling. So if it comes to to wrestling with him, I believe you have you will have no problems, right? Nah, not at all. And, and honestly, I, I might out wrestle him in the fight because he's he's a strictly a Greco guy, right? So he lacks in a lot of areas. I mean, he's he's basically a one trick pony. So um, I, I just feel like there's really no way he wins besides grabbing me and, and just holding me right and stalling out the rounds but I, I don't see that happening honestly who were the fighters who helped um you in preparation for this fight uh all my teammates over at factory x um i got like alex hernandez uh jacoby jones been helping me a lot uh, i trained with markel um but a lot of work i've been doing is with my coach scotty miller um jordan and uh, coach mark over at factory x uh, we've been putting in a lot of work uh, uh, since I've been here. Honestly, we've been putting in a lot of work to evolve my game. And uh, when when I'm out there beating the hell out of Mads, and you guys are definitely going to see that. May I ask you, you know, to a few details about how are you going to, or how have you improved your game? Um, without saying too much, uh, I've worked a lot on my I've worked a lot on my footwork and a lot on my uh, wrestling since I've been here. And uh, I, th I think when I fight Matson, a lot of that's really going to shine. The first fight I had here, my first camp was with uh, Austin Hubbard. And uh, I feel like there was a big improvement just in that fight for one camp. And coming into this camp, I'm going to have an even bigger improvement in, in my skill set, which is kind of absurd, right, for how old I am and how long I've been doing this. But I'm one of those guys who constantly puts myself in a position to learn and, and evolve. So 
but that's what you guys are going to see. You're going to see a whole new evolution of me every time I fight. I didn't have the chance to interview you at the time. Uh, was there any particular reasons why why you you switch camps? Um, there wasn't any particular reason why I switched camp. I just wanted to get out of California. Um, there's a lot of political bullshit going on out there, and and it just turned into it. To me, it's no longer the place where people go to chase their dreams. It's kind of the place where people go there to steal your dreams. You know what I mean? Ooh, and there's just yeah. a lot of corruption, a lot of bullshit there. And, and honestly, I can't handle the liberals there. They're just fucking retarded. So I needed to get out of there. And, and unfortunately, I couldn't take my camp with me. So I had to make a choice to get myself out of there and make the switch. Okay, I, I understand. So um, I knew that your fight was supposed to go down in February at UFC 271, but then it was moved down to UFC 73. Um, what's the, the reason for that? Uh, I, I don't really know, honestly. Mark Madsen pulled out of the fight because of an injury, an injury closed in, uh, in the closed in, in the closed in. They didn't, they didn't tell me what injury it was. I can't think of the fucking word I'm thinking of right now, but. Uh, undisclosed, I believe. Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't tell me what his injury was, but he just said he, they, they told me he pulled out because of an injury. Uh, they offered me somebody else. I said, no, I'll wait for Madsen. And then uh, they told me, okay, he might be sitting. I said, whatever, no big deal. I'm going to go do my medicals anyway. I got my medicals done, and then a week later, they told me Madsen's ready to fight again. So, I don't know. Honestly, in my head, I think he just tried to bitch out of the fight, and uh, I wasn't having that, so I, I'm willing to wait. How is it going to be, you know, for you to have fans back and to fight again in front uh, yeah, in a live audience? Oh, it's going to be good, man. I can't wait. Uh, it's been a while since I've got to fight in front of a live audience again, right? Like, When I fought uh, Hubbard, there was a few people at the Apex, right? When I fought Miller at the Apex, there was a few people there, but it wasn't, it was nothing like the uh, normal crowd that I'm used to, but uh, I'm definitely excited to be out in Florida, the free state of Florida and fight and then, uh, you know, party with the people after I start this guy. <laughs> yeah, I believe it was since the Roberts fight in 2019, so it's almost yeah. three years. <laughs> That's a why. So um, you're 39 and you seem to enjoy a second, a second youth as far as results go. What's your <laughs> secret for that? <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I just got lucky with the genes of my parents. I got good genes and uh, I don't know. I smoke a lot of weed and laugh a lot, I guess. I don't really know <laughs> what to say. Um, but I don't know, maybe my mentality. I'm the kind of person who's never, I don't, I don't allow myself to slow down. Um, I constantly put myself in positions that are uncomfortable for me in my life. So that way I'll constantly be evolving and growing. And I think that's a big part of it. You know what I mean? What, what keeps me from, from growing old and, and especially in this sport. But a lot of it, I think, is just my mentality, man. I'm just a happy-go-lucky kid, you know, that's living his dreams. And even though I'm 39, you know, and that, that's still me. So, uh, like I said, I'm still living like I'm in high school, man. Like, I like to have fun with the boys. You know, I like to hang out. I smoke weed all day, play video games when I'm not training. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I'm just doing me, man. I'm just living my best life. What do you like to, to play? I like to play some shooters. I like survival games, but I'm a PC gamer, so I play a lot of PC games. And I actually stream on Twitch, too. So uh, I, I do that. I do that. That's my, that's my escape from fighting. What's the name of your uh, channel, I believe, on Twitch? Uh, they're called, oh, right? it's from Healthy Shell. Yeah, it's from Healthy Shell. Just like all my social medias. Like, I keep it simple, so, you know, I mean, I don't forget. And no one else forgets. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So I, I obviously I invite fans to check it out. Um, you know, we, we see different fighters uh, and I'm not implying obviously that, you know, you're becoming older or you're too old, but still we, we see different fighters fighting, um, you know, pushing the 40s and even for, at 45 uh, sometimes. How many fights do you still feel to, to have it uh, in the UFC? Or in MMA in general? Geez, man, I don't know. Um, I don't I don't really, geez, I, I can't really give you a number, but what I could say is the day that um, you could tell the difference between me and the 20-year-olds that are in the gym training is probably the day that I'll start thinking about that. <laughs> but as of right now, I, I don't that's not even something that's in my head. Um, quitting is not quitting is not a word that that I uh, that I give too much power to in my life. So uh, I don't know, man. Honestly, like I said, as, as soon as I start slowing down or, or something like something similar to that, you know what I mean? Then, then maybe I'll think about it, but I don't, I don't see that coming anytime soon. You will soon celebrate your first decade in the UFC. 
how do you comment on the 10 years you spent there? Man, it's been crazy. <laughs> I was actually thinking about it the other day because March, you know, March 9th was my 10 year from the Ultimate Fighter. And then when I actually, like, you know, I mean, was with the UFC. But uh, man, it's, it's, it's been a crazy ride. It's been a totally crazy ride. And, and I've met a lot of really awesome people. I've got to do a really, a lot of really cool things that, you know, the vast majority of people don't get to do. I've, like, I've got to meet people, you know what I mean? And I don't know, man, it's just been, I'm just nothing but grateful for, for everything that, that I've got to, uh, got to experience in my life and do. And, uh, man, I, I don't know. I, I'm just super grateful, man. I'm just super grateful that I lived the life that I lived because my life could have been completely different had I not found fighting when I did. What is the craziest memory you have from these 10 years? Oh man. What, what do you mean? Uh, what, what, what do you, okay. Let's, let's elaborate a little bit. What do you mean by crazy? Like, uh, like a high moment or a low moment? Like what do you, uh, no, perhaps actually, uh, I just wanted to know the wildest one. Wildest man. I think the wildest thing that I, that I feel like I've done that I'm most proud of is, uh, beating Anthony and at UFC 173, which is basically a hundred UFCs ago. Um, a lot of people don't know this because I don't, I don't really boast about it or tell people, but when I fought Anthony and uh, that was a really scary fight for me. You know, I got paid $8,000 to fight that guy. Whoa. And uh, in the first 30 seconds, he broke my left orbital and gave me double vision for the next year of my life. And so that to me is, is probably my, my most proudest moment in fighting because that's when I learned that I could do things I never thought I could do. Right. Like, I beat Anthony Anticoni with double vision. I beat the hell out of him in that fight. And uh, a lot of people don't know this because, like I said, I don't really tell a lot of people, but I, I would say it's probably that. That's probably my most proudest moment, my craziest memory that I have in fighting. And then going to the hospital and get surgery and three more surgeries on my face after that to correct my vision. <laughs> well, I mean, you UFC fighters, but in general, you MMA fighters are perhaps the toughest people on, on earth. So all my respect for that. Um, there is something that, that you said that caught my attention and you mentioned that, you know, having discovered um, fighting change your life. Um, have, you know, have you been thinking about how would be your life if you hadn't, uh, you know, uh, start fighting? Man. Yeah, man, my life could be completely different, right? Like, I don't want to say, I don't want to say I, I could have just been a nobody, but I could have just been another person, you know what I mean? And, and I couldn't, I couldn't, if I didn't push myself to do these extraordinary things, I wouldn't be living the extraordinary life that I live. You know what I mean? And, and before fighting, uh, I was working just odd jobs here and there. I basically worked any kind of job you could possibly think of besides like working in a food restaurant, because I probably just eat people's food as I serve them. But, um, man, yeah. So before fighting, I was an electrician. I learned how to be an electrician right before. And then I actually quit that. I was getting paid 60 bucks an hour, you know what I mean, doing that. And then I quit that to be broken homeless for a couple of years and, and be a fighter. So, I mean, I, I, by now I could have had, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know that the, the happy white picket fence life, I guess people want to call it, but no regrets, man. I, I'm, I'm even, I'm happier. I think I'm happier now than, than I would have been if, had I had not taken the route that I did. Do you believe that the fighters, uh, situation from an economical point of view has improved over these past 10 years uh you mean like money wise yes yes oh yeah definitely definitely um things are a little expensive right now but uh yeah it's definitely gone up and it's definitely gotten a lot better than it has because like i said i was getting paid eight and eight to fight when i when i first got in the ufc and now guys i think started like 12 or a little more than that right which is pretty yeah. good right like that's good for them but I don't know, man. When, when, I, when I think about that and, and fighter money and stuff like that, it all comes down to just negotiations, man. Like fighters that bitch about how much money they get paid is that's kind of their own fault. You know what I mean? Because it's your negotiation skills that got you that shitty contract and you signed that shitty contract. So guys that bitch about that kind of thing, I mean, that's just to me, that's a peasant mentality. You have just a poor me mentality and that's bullshit. So I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm a kind of person who's big on self responsibility and I work hard for what I got. So no one could ever take that away from me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You're obviously right in that. So before I let you go, I would like to 
to hear a few picks from you if if possible oh, yeah. um, UFC 273 is headlined by the clash between Alexander Volkanovski and the Korean Zombie uh, what's your pick for this fight man it's hard to go against Volkanovski because he's so good right but I kind of want to root for Zombie man he hasn't he hasn't really looked that good in his last few fights but I kind of want to root for him because I just like the guy I like his I like his persona. I like, I like his, uh, I like his energy. You know what I mean? So I kind of want to root for the zombie, but man, I think Volkanowski is probably going to take that one. Hey, what about the coming event, the Bantaway clash between Aljamain Sterling and Peter Yan? Uh, I think Sterling's going to get his ass beat again, like the first fight. <laughs> I think, uh, I think Sterling kind of got a buy that first time. And if I'm honest, he, he, uh, he, he took the coward's way out of that fight. I don't think he was rocked the way he was. And, I'm pretty sure you could literally hear Ray Longo tell him to act like he's knocked out, right? So uh, I think it's going to play out just like the first one, except hopefully Yan doesn't throw any illegal knee and get himself disqualified and actually wins that title back. But uh, I'm, I'm going Yan on that one. What uh, song are you working out to if you already oh, I, picked one? Oh, yeah, yeah. I walk out to Highway to Hell by ACDC. <laughs> that's my jam that's, right there. That's a very, very nice uh, choice, and I, I really enjoyed that song. Sir, it was, it was a pleasure for me talking uh, with you today. Before I let you go, do you have any last message? Uh, yeah, I just want to thank my coaches over at Factory X, Coach Mark, Scotty, Jordan, uh, Coach G, uh, all my training partners, you know what I mean, that's helped me out. Jacoby Jones, Alex Hernandez, uh, um, uh, um, all, my, all my teammates there, uh, AY, Jason, uh, Markel, you know what I mean? All the guys that are in my group, because we usually group ourselves by, by class, you know what I mean? Uh, I think all those guys. I also want to thank Rev Gear. Uh, they've stuck with me since the beginning. Also, Defense Soap. Uh, huge shout out to Smoke Buddy. Um, geez, if I'm missing someone, I, I'm going to really feel like shit here, but just all the, all the people that supported me, man, because uh, man, that, that, that support that I've had over these years with, with those with my diehards is what's kept me around, I feel. It. It's something that's made me want to keep doing what I'm doing. Otherwise, I feel like I'm not really getting any kind of satisfaction out of it. So I just want to thank those guys, thank all my fans, and uh, also thank Mark Matson for sacrificing his undefeated record to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, thank you very much for this interview. Best of luck with your upcoming fight, and hopefully I'll hear again from you in the future. Thank you, Tudor. I appreciate it. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too. Peace.